Hi and welcome back to freephotoshop.com and video tutorial number 18 in our series on the levels command here inside Photoshop. In the previous video we looked at a couple of techniques for improving skin tones inside of an image. In this video we're going to look at another technique for doing the same job. But this technique I'm going to show you is used by a lot of pros in the field and its approach is a little more structured than that of what we were doing in the previous video. So I'm going to kick things off here by just introducing you to this image on screen. It's a photograph called Another Beautiful Girl and was taken by photographer Altaf Hussein and was downloaded by myself courtesy of www.sxc.hu. Now I'm going to just drag this banner that's sitting in the layers palette in the form of a group and drag it onto this delete icon to dispose of that information so we get a clear view of the screen. Now before I started the camera rolling I went ahead and set these four sample points to give me a good tonal representation of the skin inside of this photograph and the RGB values relating to those sample points are based over here in the info palette so we have number one through four now what I'm going to do is change these values to a different form of measurement. So I'll click on this really little eyedropper icon which opens up a submenu and allows me to switch the unit of measurement to a different color model. And for our purposes here I want to switch these measures out to a CMYK color model. And it's important to note we're not actually leaving the RGB color mode here. We're not entering the CMYK mode at all. We're just measuring an RGB environment with CMYK values. And to prove that, I'm going to come up here to the image menu, select mode, and you can still see that we have the tick mark next to the RGB color mode to prove that we are still inside RGB color. Now before I explain why I've done that, I want to just briefly run you through what CMYK color mode is and how it works. Now we discussed the RGB mode in its basic form way back in tutorial number 3 of this series. So you'll know that RGB, red, green and blue are the primary colors of light. Well CMYK is based on the color model of ink and the letters CMYK stand for cyan, magenta, yellow and the K stands for black. Now just to run that theory past you in a visual form I'm going to switch to this image here called the color wheel which is a pretty standard way of looking at colors and how they work within the RGB and CMYK environments. First of all let's just remind ourselves of the RGB color mode. You will remember that illumination of red, green and blue lights I showed you earlier in the training. Well here's the red Here's the green and here's the blue from that diagram and they're all sitting next to a little symbol of a light bulb which reminds us that these are the three primary colors of light. Then we have the three secondary colors of light, cyan, magenta and yellow and they're created from mixing the three primary colors together in different ways. So for example if we mix red and green light we end up with yellow light. And you'll remember that when we worked on that Grand Canyon image, uh, for example, and we wanted to add some more yellow but couldn't because the RGB color space doesn't provide us with a yellow channel, we ended up getting around it by either adding more red and green, which forms to make more yellow, as you can see from the color wheel here, or here's the other way you can work. We could add more of the colors opposite. So here we see that blue is opposite to yellow here in the color wheel, and so naturally they're opposite colors to each other and in fact we call them complementary colors because if you add one you automatically subtract its opposite. So we can add more yellow to an RGB image by subtracting blue from it. Now let's switch our attention to the CMYK color space and once again it works based on the exact same color wheel it's just that it works in the opposite way. So the three primary colors are cyan, magenta and yellow. The colors that sit next to the little letter icons that represent the printed media. And the secondary colors are indeed red, green and blue. So a commercial printer would have access to cyan, magenta and yellow inks. 
It would also have access to black because mixing the three primary colours wouldn't be able to simulate anything darker than a muddy brown, so black's there as a solution to that problem. You can also make red ink, for example, by mixing yellow and magenta inks in the same way as we did before in the colour wheel. The main difference to remember between the ink environment of CMYK and the light-based RGB environment is that as you add more ink to a CMYK value, you're constantly darkening the image, you're darkening that pixel. When you're increasing the value of light in an RGB image, you're always brightening it up. Okay, I think you'll find this colour wheel really helpful when working with levels here inside of Photoshop. It's very difficult to remember what mixes together to form cyan light, for example. But with this wheel that I'll provide for you to download from the free Photoshop.com website, you'll be able to use it as a reference when working here inside of Photoshop. For now, I'm going to switch back to our Another Beautiful Girl image. And now you'll understand a little more about these CMYK values and what they're actually telling us. So if we focus for a moment on the second sample point, you'll see that first of all these values are measured using a percentage value and that means the percentage of a particular ink that's applied to the pixel or to the dot if you want to use printing terms. So here for example in sample 2 we have a mix of 8% cyan, 37% magenta, 52% for yellow and nothing at all for black. Now there's no magical CMYK values for the perfect skin tones but we do have a direction to head towards. What we're looking for in general is for the magenta and yellow values to be fairly close and if anything the yellow value should be slightly higher. The cyan value should be about 20 to 40 percent of the magenta value and the black should be as low as possible. And that goes for a multitude of skin tones by the way. You'll find the darker the skin becomes the more ink you'll need to add but the ratio of inks should be around the same. And like I said before, sometimes you'll find images where this doesn't work out all that well, but you should get some pretty decent results with most of the images that you practice this on. And remember, of course, it's not a definitive magical value. It's just a guide to help you out. Okay, so with this image, and with sample point number two in particular in our sites, you can see that we have a yellow value that's considerably higher than the magenta value. Cyan looks pretty good and black is fine, just down there at 0%. I'm going to quickly switch back to the colour wheel image and just see if we can identify where we are. Well, we know that magenta and yellow mix to create red, which is the dominant colour in all skin tones, but in the beautiful girl image we had more yellow than magenta, and if we look at what happens if we have more yellow than magenta here on the colour wheel, then we end up with this region right here, which puts us in the range of oranges. And if I switch back to the beautiful girl image, we'd expect to find this image looking a little too orange, and in my opinion, that's absolutely correct. So let's have a go at drawing those oranges back into a more subtle skin tone. I'm going to start off by adding a levels adjustment layer to the image, and I'll go ahead and call it Skin 2, seeing as we're basing this on the second of our four sample points. Now I'll go ahead and double click on the grey eyedropper so we can select a colour to use. And I'm going to start by copying the second sample point values into the CMYK section down here. So that's 8% for cyan, 37% for magenta, 52% for yellow and 0 for black. Now I have our base values in there. I'm going to increase magenta and decrease yellow to bring them closer together. So I'll increase magenta to 42% and then decrease yellow to 45% just to get the two values aimed in towards the middle or the average of those two. And once we've done that we'll leave the cyan and black values alone and hit OK. Now we've set the grey eyedropper to match the tone of skin we want for sample 2. I'm going to make sure I've got the middle eyedropper selected and then press the caps lock key on the keyboard to toggle the appearance of the eyedropper to a more precise cursor. And just like we did in the previous video, I'm going to hover the cursor above the second sample point and when we've got things lined up, I'll go ahead and click to switch that sample point out to our new values. 
and I quite like the effect that we've come up with here. I quite like the changes we've made. And you can see confirmation of the values, by the way, in the info palette over here. The numbers on the left are the original values, and the numbers on the right are our new values. I'm going to hit Alt-P to switch the preview off and see the original image, minus our skin tone alterations. That's Command-P on the Mac, by the way. And I'll press it once more to see the changes we've made here inside Levels. I'm going to hit OK to accept these as they are. I don't want to use these colours as my default, so I'll just click No to this standard question that we get every time we change one of the eyedroppers. OK, if you want to make changes to another sample point, then just repeat the steps we used to adjust the second sample point. Keeping in mind, of course, that any further changes with adjustment layers will affect previous adjustments underneath them in the layers palette. So you'll be stacking levels adjustments layers on top of each other, and they will affect anything below it, including other levels adjustment layers that are in the layers palette. OK, I'm happy with this image now. We've taken a lot of the oranges that were present in the skin and replaced them with a more natural, subtle colour for the skin tones in this young lady's face. There's one last thing I want to do though. I'm going to select the mask over here. Then I'll select the paintbrush and make sure that black is selected as the foreground colour. And I'll also make sure I'm working with a decent sized brush. I'm not going to be too careful here. I'm also going to soften up the edges of the brush to give myself some smooth transitions between where I'm painting and where I'm not. Finally, I'm going to start painting with black to mask out the changes we applied and bring back those more saturated features in the background and also in the hair, I'd say as well. We'll see how that goes. And if you want more details on how to use the mask that comes along with the adjustment layer as standard here inside of Photoshop, then you can find a lot more details by looking at video tutorial number 10 and video tutorial number 11 here in this freephotoshop.com series on the levels command. We spent quite a bit of time back then looking at the levels adjustment layer in particular and also some basic masking techniques. OK, that's looking pretty good. I'm going to hide these sample points from view by using the keyboard shortcut Control H, that's Command H on the Macintosh side of things. And there we have it. I'm going to turn off the adjustment layer to see a before view of the image. Too orange in my opinion. And here's the image with the adjustment layer turned on. I'd say that looks a lot better than it did before. The skin tones look a lot more realistic, all thanks to using those CMYK values inside the RGB colour mode as a guide to where we wanted the skin tones to be. Well, thanks once again for joining me here at freephotoshop.com. In the next completely free video tutorial, we're going to take an advanced look at the histogram. In the meantime, thanks very much for watching this tutorial, and I'll see you in the next video.